A very good afternoon to the esteemed guests and participants. I, the Bakshi Joshi from Dr. Rajendra Prasad Law Institute, Kumau University, Nenitar, feeling highly honored to welcome you all in this online workshop on the topic, Dimensional Issues and Challenges of Intellectual Property Rights. The topic we are addressing today is a fast growing field and has a lot of interest from large number of lawyers, research scholars, academicians, corporates, and students. To throw some light on today's topic, I would like to quote Thomas Jefferson here. He who receives an idea from me receives instruction himself without lessening mind, as he who lights his taper at night receives light without darkening me. Now, I would humbly request Professor Kripansa, Dean and Head, Faculty of Law, Kumaon University, Nenital, to present the welcome address. Sir, please. Thank you. Very good morning, afternoon. I would like to take this privilege to extend a very warm welcome to all the delegates and participants in this online workshop on dimensional issues and challenges of intellectual property rights organized by Dr. Rajan Prasad Law Institute, Kumai University, Nanital. We are honored this afternoon by the presence of Professor N. K. Joshi, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Kumai University, Nanital. I am grateful to you finding time to be with us despite your tight schedule. I welcome you, sir, from the core of my heart. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome Professor Raman Mittal, Professor in Charge, Campus Law Center, University of Delhi. Professor Mittal is a scholar of international repute. He has extensive exposure in the areas of intellectual property and cyber law. He will be enlightening us on today's theme that is dimensional issues and challenges of intellectual property rights. I extend very warm welcome to you, sir. I have another speaker this afternoon, Professor S. C. Roy, Dean, Research and Development and Director, Center for Innovation, Research and Facilitation in Intellectual Property for Humanity and Development, Chanakya National Law University, Patna. He is internationally renowned and has very rich experience in creating awareness about the economic, social, and cultural benefits of intellectual property rights. I heartily welcome you, sir. I also welcome my senior colleague, Professor S. D. Sharma, Director, Dr. Rajan Pasad Law Institute, Professor R. K. Bhatt, former Dean, Faculty of Law, Kumai University, SSA Campus, Almora, Professor J. S. Bisht, Professor A. K. Naveen, my junior colleagues at SSA Campus, Almora, my colleagues at Dr. Rajan Pasad Law Institute, Nainital, students, participants, and Mr. Ravin Bisht for his technical support. The National Intellectual Property Rights Policy very aptly states that the 21st century belongs to the knowledge era and this end is driven by knowledge economy. Coming decades are very, very crucial for India. The decision taken by Indian government yesterday to ban 59 Chinese apps has necessitated indigenous inventions and is a current call for creative India, innovative India, that is Rasnatmak Bharat, Abhinav Bharat. Recent inventions from hand-free door openers to basic ventilators during COVID-19 pandemic have proved that necessity is the mother of invention. And every invention needs IPR protection for being marketable financial asset. Our government has launched various schemes 
like make in india startup msme etc and it advocates vocal for local thus this is the high time to discuss dimensional issues and challenges of india ipr i hope this workshop will be able to boost the local business ecosystem at the same time protecting public interest and traditional wisdom thank you uh, thank you sir thank you so much for giving a perfect start to this program um, am i audible i am profusely elated to invite honorable vice chancellor kumau university professor n k joshi sir the man of distinct vision and the fountain head of illuminating ideas an idol of knowledge and experience and inspiration to all of us the topic of today's workshop has also been suggested by him your words of wisdom have always enlightened us and have strengthened our steps i request professor sd sharma sir director dr rajendra prasad law institute to kindly present the message of honorable vice chancellor professor n k joshi sir sir please good afternoon to all the participants resource persons from delhi university professor raman mittal ji professor s c roy from national law university patna and uh, the organizing team director technical support dean faculty of law professor ak pant and uh, former dean professor dk bhadji our senior colleagues of faculty of law kumai university including professor js best and uh, professor ak navin uh, dr D. P. Yadav, Arshad Hussain Ji, Doctor uh, Dalif uh, Lal Ji, and uh, the other participants, students of Kumau University, National Law University, and other universities, and uh, esteemed uh, guests from different corner of India. The Vice Chancellor had sent the message. Early in the morning, that to communicate my message and good message to all the participants, including the organizing team, as he has said, that I have to know that Dr. Rajesh Prasad Law Institute, Kumai University, in Anita, is organizing a workshop on. dimensional issues and challenges of intellectual property rights my best to say to the all participants of the workshop and welcome to resource person professor raman mittal professor in charge of delhi university professor s c rai dean national law university chanakya professor s d sharma professor a k pant dean and head faculty of law kumai university professor d k bhat former dean and all faculty members of the kumai university whole organizing team including the director technical support mr ravi s best and my congratulation to all the team and deserve to be commended for organizing such a wonderful workshop i extend my best wishes for the success of the one day online workshop this is the message of honorable vice chancellor this is the message and he has conveyed the thanks to all thank you sir thank you so much uh, for always motivating and initiating such programs Now it's time for theme introduction. I humbly request Professor S. D. Sharma sir, 
director dr rajendra prasad law institute kumaon university nainital and the organizing director of this workshop to kindly throw some light on today's theme dimensional issues and challenges of intellectual property rights sir please again on my personal behalf good afternoon to all the participants resource persons technical support director ravi bist ji professor ak pan ji professor dk bhat ji and senior colleagues of the faculty of law kuma university including js best ak navin dp yadav arshad hussain puran bora ji and dalveer lal ji to all the other faculty members of the dr rajendra prasad law institute including dr deepakshi joshi and dr suresh chandra pandey ji today's seminar is one of the unique in the sense that we are living at present in a digital system of the world society and therefore a topic which has suggested by honorable vice chancellor of kumaon university to organize and to invite the resource person from the reputed university i thought that professor raman mittal is one of the person who have the capacity to highlight on the basic challenges issues and new dimensions of intellectual property he is working on the intellectual property from the inception in the same way the another expert is professor sc roy he has done his phd on the intellectual property rights he has initiated the academic work in the national law university patna by establishing a directorate and the department both the resource persons are very unique they have the expertise knowledge and the participants participants in this seminar are from every corner of india including the jammu kashmir and the raipur lucknow hyderabad tripati bhopal ahmedabad muradabad sarsa guwahati rajkot azamgarh bhu banaras du delhi and jaspur the chennai gangtok patna meerut noida gorakhpur sonipat dehradun jaipur sajapur pune and again tirupati and then kanpur uh, anantnagpur then kolkata nalbari assam unnao bijnor and from every corner every corner hosangabad pandicherry gaziabad so many shimla and the rudki uh, then uh, again the khatima or every from every corner they are the participants more than 500 participants are participating in this unique kind of the international topic and thus i will start my today's presentation as a theme with the words of kalidas what the kalidas said about the asya uttar dishayam disi devta himalo nam nagadi raja we are organizing this seminar in a place as we have organized in 2005 also as a intellectual property rights of the people of intellectual society in almora and it is a land of those persons who has contributed the lot about the uh, the development of the country by their creative activity therefore it is a himalayan range it is a land of sumitranand pant it is a land of the ilachand joshi who are the very famous uh, creative writer creative poet not only in india but in the global uh, scenario of the society thus the my my observation about the system of the today's seminar relating to the issues which has 
emerged from the international society professor john roll rightly said that society is more or less self sufficient because why self sufficient it is a association of persons who in their natural relation recognized as a binding certain rules of conduct specifying a system of cooperation principles of social justice are necessary for making the choice between various available system why the individual is the basically the self interested because if he has created some new invention he want to protect it and by interference of others that's why john rawls quotation is up to the mark in this uh, sense and grossius and black stone said who invents the new things and first he has the right to retain it as a property therefore it is a intellectual property it is a property which cannot be seen by anyone there are the two kinds of the property one is related to the industrial rights property another is the copyrights property therefore there is a system of the pro protecting the property and in the property also it requires you to follow the ethics logic metaphysical philosophical uh, aspect of the property then the duty of everyone is not to interfere not to in uh, uh, infringe the any rights of the persons as he has created by own wisdom by own intelligentsia by own own way of the creative ide ideas sukrat also rightly said in this riga but uh, the due to the shortage of time i will not quote everyone thus one side there is a protection of human rights of the intellectual property as prescribed under the udhr as prescribed under the social economic uh, covenants and cultural covenants 1966 and another side there is a statutory law and that statutory law uh, includes the various aspect especially after the 1994 when india became the signatory that's the challenge what are the main challenges this is the basic today's topic the challenges the our expert will clear all the challenges because professor raman mittal is one of the famous expert in this area and he is leading not only the india but he is giving the guidance to the intellectual workers and the intellectual persons globally i hope that he will take the much time and what are the main challenges as a theme the challenges are related to the piracy of intellectual property which is going on in the international scenario as a fashion as a fashion cut and policy cut and paste policy is going on this is one challenge another is new branches are going to be developed for example the digital aspect some rules has framed in 2017 and then the it includes the broadcasting it includes the the telecasting it includes the internet the website and it includes the cyber space and insufficient regulation because time to time after 1994 99 2000 2002 and continuously it is going on but even if there is some issue relating to the insufficiency of regulation because some are the some uh, infringement of the intellectual property rights are uh, criminal as well as the civil but some are only the civil there is no remedy for that then lack of awareness in respect of ipr in india there is a lot of the lack of awareness no one is aware about the intellectual property rights the persons only those persons are aware who are working in the commercial field they may be the businessmen they may be using the trademark and they may be but farmers right it is codified but the farmers are not aware about their rights also therefore lack of the awareness is another challenge and lack of the uh, the efficient application 
control of the re regulation this is continuously coming on because of this international the international website access of the internet everyone is uh, near to each one and uh, this can be only uh, <laughs> solved by those uh, regulations which have the power to competent legislature our uh, the expert will focus on the points therefore i am in full confidence that they will not start from only the uh, the get agreement they will not start from the wipo they will not go on only of this uh, wppt wct and other areas uh, of the trips agreement but they will practically uh, solve the issue which the public at present is facing the industries are very much aware about their rights but the intellectual mass who are working in the academic field they are not aware about this system therefore what mechanism shall be developed in the future that some other aspects are also there to avoid the the this uh, infringement of this uh, intellectual property right one is the industrial right another as i have pointed out the copyright to uh, advise indian ip right expert first of, first of all to take the advice of all these things but these are there are 20 and some more than that uh, i will not uh, take much time because we are eager to to listen our expert especially professor mittal because professor subhas is uh, facing some problem to join this uh, 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 webinar or workshop therefore my request is not only 40 minutes say, we are allotting, allotting or we are requesting to our esteemed expert whatever time he will take we will uh, uh, we will very much interest to hear professor uh, mittal thank you very much once again welcome to all and every participants every participants from every corner he may be professor he may be academician he may be social worker he may be student and he may be the industrialist or he may be a government employee he may be a another person media person welcome to all in this special kind of uh, webinar because we are getting this opportunity to listen to our esteemed expert in this area who is sitting uh, in delhi where uh, at present there is a problem but he is expressing the views uh, within this every corner of the global society not in india thank you very much sir and uh, we are grateful we have uh, joined us and uh, our participants will benefit it by your expertise knowledge thank you Thank you, sir, for the brief and valuable introduction of the topic. I do make a great honor and privilege to introduce our speaker, Professor Raman Mittal, sir, Dean, Faculty of Law, University of Delhi, an eminent scholar and academician with specialization in intellectual property law, law of contract, and cyber law. Authored and edited various books. In the field of IPR, competition law, international law, copyright and trademark, cyber law, law of contract, family law, legal aid, and many more. There is a long list of research papers published in various international and national journals. He has delivered lectures to the officials of judicial services at Delhi Judicial Academy and also the officials of public administration time to time. He has undertaken various research projects and thereby contributed in the policy making of the central government. He has also the member, he was also the member of the drafting committee who drafted the copyright rules 2012, a research project of HRD ministry. He has also undertaken the research project granted by the Max Planck Institute of Intellectual Property and Competition Law, Munich, Germany. He is the member of Licensing Executive Society International. It is indeed a very proud moment for all of us. We are delighted to have you among us, sir. We thank you for your kind presence there. Now I humbly request you, sir, to share his view on the topic of this virtual workshop. 
Okay, thank you very much. And uh, Honorable Professor N.K. NK Joshi, Vice Chancellor, Professor A.K. Pant, Professor S.C. Roy, Professor D.K. Bhatt, Professor S.D. Sharma, Mr. Ravindra Bisht, Dr. Dipankshi Joshi, and Mr. S Dr. Suresh Pandey. It is uh, a really proud privilege for me to be able to address the gathering here. And um, for that, I would like to start my presentation. And with your permission, let me proceed to share the screen. OK, is the screen visible to you now with my presentation? Uh, no. Is the screen visible? No, not right now. Not really? No. Now? Uh, now, yeah, yeah. It's, it's visible, sir. It's visible. It's visible. OK, yeah. if I make it full screen, just tell me if it is visible now. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. OK, so I would like to speak on the topic of the day, that is dimensional issues and challenges of intellectual property rights. So I'm really grateful to you, for to the organizers, for inviting me to this webinar. OK, so we'll be talking about intellectual property. We'll be particularly talking about the origin, development, scope, and relevance of intellectual property. Now, I'll start with a question. If we have three circles with us, one circle is known as law, the other is known as property, and the third one is known as intellectual property. How would you like to draw so all these three circles so that the relationship between these three concepts becomes clear? So just try for a moment. And according to me, the relationship is something like this. Law is the widest circle within which is a smaller circle called property and within which there's a still smaller circle called intellectual property. Now this relationship, I wanted to draw in the very beginning so as to make things in the right perspective. Okay, so this is the kind of nature that man encountered when man first stepped on the planet Earth. He must have been something like this. I want all of us to imagine what would have been the life like in those days. We all can imagine and we can learn from one of the greatest jurists at that time. The question before, the first question before him, before man was preservation. He somehow wanted to preserve himself. And then after he had secured the preservation, he moved towards player and then towards power. This has been the journey of mankind. And what was the life like that at that time? In the words of Thomas Hobbes, life at that time was isolated, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. Do we really agree? Was it isolated? Yes. Was it poor? Yes, poor in the sense that the gadgets that we have today, the kind of things that we have today were not available at that time. Nasty and brutish, really. Nasty and brutish because all the skeletons that we have found from those days gone by, the age of those persons were not more than 40 to 45 years. That means once the man was past his peak, nature did not at that time permit him to survive. Therefore, it was short. So my man wanted to change everything. So how did man change? Man changed it by making law. So there we come to the origin of law. Now, what was the first law? I would like to ask a question or pose a question to the audience. What was the first law that was made by man? If we all agree that we as human beings are the masters of our law, we made our own law and we still make our own law for ourselves, then we must have started somewhere. There must have been some law with which we, we had started. What was that first law? So this question has mesmerized the jurists over millennia. Various philosophers have opined on this. What is our take on it? 
I would like to quote here one of the greatest jurists of all times, Jeremy Bentham. In his book on laws and morals, he writes, he tries to respond to this question indirectly. What he says is, law and property were born together and they died together. Now this small statement, we can find answers to some of the questions, some of the fundamental questions. I repeat his statement. He said, law and property are born together and they die together. What does this mean? Law and property are born together. That means he wanted to say property was the first law that made by that was made by man and they died together. That means property would be the last law to be disband, disbanded by man. So man is the creator of law and the first law to be created by mankind was property law. This shows how dear property is to us. And at the same time, he would say, he said that property would be the last law to survive. When law is disintegrating, property will be the last one to go. So that shows the importance of property. And that really shows the importance of intellectual property because which is the one of the latest additions to the kitty of property. Now, the next question is, that I have posed is, when did we make the first law? When we agree that we are the makers of a law, then we must have started somewhere. We must have started sometime. What was that time? So we say that law is responsive in nature. That means it is a response to some problem, some challenge that is encountered by mankind. Now, What was the challenge? The challenge was that there must have been so many quarrels. For example, I, let me pose another question here. Suppose there was a man at that time, a man like Mr. A, who is apparent here. He was hungry. He got hold of a rabbit. He ran fast, got hold of a rabbit, killed it and was about to eat it up. That somebody else, another man came by and snatched the rabbit from this man, Mr. A. Mr. B came and he tried to snatch the rabbit from him. Now the question is, the rabbit belongs to whom? The dispute must have arisen like that. So the answer, what is the answer? What is your answer? According to nature, the rabbit belongs to B because he has been able to snatch it away from A. Might is right for nature. So what have would happen? There would have been a fight between A and B in which either both of them would be injured or one of them could be injured or one of them could have died also, right? A could have been fatally injured too. So we wanted to avoid it. One day we thought enough of it. So we wanted a journey towards lawmaking and we made a norm that because A has expanded labor and he had the skill to catch rabbits. Therefore, the rabbit must belong to him. Well, there's a counter argument by B also. B says, well, if he had the capacity, the capability to catch a rabbit, I have the capability, I have the skill, I have the talent to snatch away the rabbit from A. Why are you protecting A's talent and not mine? But then that is the choice that law had to make. And somewhere back, law made that choice, that rabbit belonged to A. So this is the progenitor of all property law. And the question is again extremely relevant in the domain of intellectual property, which we shall be seeing. Now, why did we, next question is, why did we make the first law? After having seen what was the first law and when did we make the first law? Why did we make the first law? Precisely to avoid conflicts or and to resolve conflicts and disputes. Okay, so let us now talk about the origin and development of intellectual property. Today, intellectual property contains patents, trademarks, copyrights, designs, confidential information, etc., etc. Now, all these tools of intellectual property had separate origin. This generalization, this clubbing of all these tools into the domain of intellectual property is a, is a later generalization. So we may say, that historically, Kalidas was a poet in the reign of 
legendary king Vikramaditya. Vikramaditya, the history says, had Navaratnas, the famous nine in his court. He had employed those nine scholars, those nine great persons who were adept in various arts and sciences in his court. Now, what was the reason behind it? So in those days, scholarships were given to those people who were great creators. Similarly, we say Ashok also followed. Akbar also followed. He had Navaratnas in his court. So why was this? This was to give, this was a way to give. Royal scholarships was a way to give patronage to the creative artists and scientists. So the old kings of history have given way to the new kings of business and laws. Now the things have changed. The artists and scientists are made to fend for themselves in the market. In this regard, tracing the history, especially of copyright, I would like to quote, I like to state one old case that arose in 12th century in Scotland during the reign of King Dermot. So there was a pastor who was living in Scotland. His name was, he was living in Scotland in the re during the reign of King Dermot. So he had written down a book, a book of church instructions, which he was using. One day, the pastor's friend visited him. He saw the book and he wanted to borrow the book. To which Saint Columba readily agreed. Saint Columba lent the book to his friend. The friend took the book with him. And in those days, there was no printing press. So there was no photocopiers. So he just copied the whole book in his through his hand, in his hand, on piece of papers, right? So and returned the book after a week. And he started, the friend started using the book himself, the copy of the book. Now, Saint Columba could not take it kindly. So he, he asked his friend to stop it and return the copy of the book to him. The friend refused. Saint Columba took the matter to the court, the court of King Dermot. Now, King Dermot had a unique problem because there was nothing like copyright law written at that time. There was no concept of copyright law, I mean, in the written form or in the form in which we have it today. So, in order to solve this problem and decide this case, he drew an analogy. He gave an example of a cow. He said, let us imagine that Saint Columba had a cow and it, his friend was visiting and he wanted to borrow the cow. And Saint Columba had lent his cow to his friend. When the cow was with the friend, the cow gave birth to a calf. Now the king framed the question. He said, my question is, the calf belongs to whom? So after framing the question, the king himself sought to answer this question. He said, the calf belongs to the cow. And because the cow belongs to Saint Columba, the calf must also belong to Saint Columba and ordered, and in the same way, he said, the copy of a book is like the baby of a book. And if the book belongs to Saint Columba, the copy of it must also belong to Saint Columba and ordered his friend to return the copy to Saint Columba. So we see that it, at those times, there was nothing like written copyright law, but it was always there in the consciousness of mankind. Today, if we have to decide the same case, we would precisely decide in the same manner. Death gives legitimacy to the theories of copyright law. Then we have, if we see the domain of copyright, the first statutory expression copyright found in 1710 during the reign of Queen Anne. What was the problem at that time? Because printing press, Gutenberg invented printing, printing press in Germany and it took about 100 or 200 years for the printing press to become popular around Europe. So when printing press was there, then what happened? Any book that was printed and brought to the market, anybody could buy the book from the market, start printing it at his own place with the help of printing press and then start marketing the book. And thereby he would be in competition with the first publisher and author. Therefore authors and publishers they approached the queen 
and said that this is patently unfair. The Queen agreed and enacted the first copyright law, that the first statutory expression of copyright law, which is known as the Statute of Anne in 1710. Later on, copyright law developed and found a statutory, its statutory expression became more and more mature. Similar is the story of other forms of intellectual property laws. So I would here like to give certain examples of the genesis of these laws. What is copyright all about? Copyright, I say, is creativity. Creativity is seminal to mankind. Man has always been creative and will always be creative. Even if, even when we go to thousands of years old caves, man was painting there. We see paintings. So man must have been composing music thousands of years back. But one day, that was at that time, there was no copy, there was no need of copyright law. But one day, when technology came by and technology met with human creativity, we needed copyright laws. That is what happened when printing press came by. Printing press was the first technology that intersected with human creativity. And at that juncture, we required copyright law. And as and when newer technologies came by and are coming by, and impacting our creative processes, we have to we have had to ship, shift our copyright law. We have had to amend our copyright laws and the copyright law grew with technology. Therefore, copyright is known as the child of technology. It has grown with technology and keeps on growing with technology as the technology advances. So does copyright. Then we come to trademark laws. Let us imagine a situation. There was a supplier A in the market. Let us suppose he was selling cloths. He was selling garments. And he was the only supplier in the market. And he was selling it to consumers. When there was only one supplier in a market to all the consumers, there was no need of any trademark law. But one day, supplier B came by. In the market he joined the market he also started selling garments now nobody the consumers did not know supplier b so what he did was he named himself as a he masqueraded himself as a he adopted the the name of a because a was already familiar with the consumers and consumers were familiar with a so at when we did it for the first time we required trademark law. So the whole growth of trademark law started to support B. Oh, sorry, to check B, to support A and the consumer. That is the genesis of trademark law. And here, many times a fundamental question is asked whether trademark law is a property protection law, whether trademark law is a property law or a consumer protection law. Well, the jurists around the world, the philosophers of trademark law, the experts of trademark law, they are equally divided. Some feel that it is a property protection law and the others feel that it is consumer protection law. The world is equally divided. Why it is property protection? Because it is all the it is all apparent. We feel that this trademark law was meant to help the supplier A and supplier A has proprietary interests in his property because B was trying to adopt A's name and A's style. So law, trademark law stopped him. So it goes to help a. But if we look behind it, we can also say that ultimately law wanted to help the consumer because consumer was not empowered enough to pursue against B. He had no means of knowing that B is masquerading against A. So law gave rights to supplier A so that A could stop B, which ultimately helps the consumer. So that school of thought says that trademark law is actually consumer protection law. So this is the genesis of trademark law and the third very important tool of intellectual property is trade secrets so we as human beings are used to keeping secrets secrets is something that we love we have been see keeping secrets under the category of castes we have been keeping secrets under language with which we would not teach others communities have kept secrets even countries like china kept secret the method of making silk for hundreds of years and we have known about esoteric groups today because secrets are so important we 
recognize trade secrets as a tool of as a form of intellectual property like copyright trademark and patents so trade secrets are extremely important and patents whatever man makes of course whatever man executes and makes something that is protectable under patents as long as it is an invention and conforms to the ideas or the concepts of novelty and inventive step which we shall discuss later so all intellectual property now is the second part of my presentation that begins idea we say is the progenitor of all intellectual property idea is very important what all can we do with idea intellectual property is concerned with ideas not ideas directly but when ideas are transformed into certain things what can we how can we transform an idea in what ways can we transform an idea first we can if an idea if we are seized with an idea we can express it we can write it down or express it in whatever ways and law says if your expression is original it is protected under, under copyright law the second is for example now let me give an example here mr a writes looks at the beauty of sunrise in the early morning composes a poem in 2010 in english language on the beauty of sunrise so in this case who owns copyright we always we will give copyright to a now what happens 5 years later mr b when he was looking at sunrise he also happened to compose a poem now by chance the poem comes to be exactly the same as that of a but b has not copied from a that is a fact b is able to prove it that he has not copied it he has written it himself so the question here is would we grant copyright to b well the requirement of law is originality if we would say if b's work is original then law would grant him copyright so in this case the poems may be exactly the same but both a and b can be accommodated with copyright provided b has the later comer has not copied it from the earlier one that is the law now what else can we do with our idea we can execute we can make something with an idea so if our execution is new then we can get patent on it because the condition the paramount condition of patent is newness now if we transpose the same example into patent setting for example a comes up with an idea to make a machine he makes a machine or he makes a medicine let us say he comes up with an idea to make a medicine and makes a medicine and the medicine is absolutely new we would grant him patent two years later b comes up with the same idea without copying from a he he absolutely didn't know about a's invention he created it all by himself he invented it all by himself would we grant him patent the answer is no because the requirement of patent law is different from the requirement of copyright law the requirement here is newness so as long as b is not new we can always we have to deny any patent rights to him the third is in the domain of what else can we do with our idea we can name an idea if we are seized with an idea for example i want to do business in garments so i give the name to that idea as x so if x is distinctive trademark law says if x is distinctive different from the idea then that can be given that that can be given trademark protection the last one is what else can we do with our idea we can keep it to ourselves and if we keep it to ourselves that means keep it secret and we make positive efforts to keep it secret then we have the protection of trade secret laws so this is the basics of all intellectual prop the four most important intellectual property rights copyright patents trademark and trade secrets this is how idea gets converted into intellectual property 
through the means of expression, execution, identification, and keeping it secret. Now, what is the relevance of intellectual property? Let's turn into a little bit of jurisprudence. We would talk about natural rights theory, the theory of personhood, and utilitarian theory of Mill and Bentham. First, Locke's theory of appropriation. Locke said, nature was created for all. All means all human beings to share. It is a common to all. We each own our body and the labor it produces. Mixing labor with the common yields a valid property claim. So the theory of John Locke was that if we do our labor, expand our labor to the common things, that common thing becomes our property, but with a rider. This theory had a rider. The rider was that no man, in his own words, he said, no man but he can have a right to what his labor is once joined to, at least where there is enough and as good left in common for others. So John Locke was for property claim, provided the commons are not left poorer, provided the person who claims for property leaves as much for others as was available to them before he made such a claim. So this is extremely important for intellectual property theories that we are going to discuss in the later part of my presentation today. Then we see the personhood and self-realization theory of Hegel. He said that to become fully self-realized, an individual must be able to project his will onto objects in the external world. This requires a stable set of claims over those objects, that is property rights. So we can equationalize his theory by saying that if there is an individual and he exerts his will on an external object, that exertion of will will create a stable claim of property. And once a person has a claim of property, his personhood is discovered. This he termed as self-realization. Now we come to the util utilitarian perspective of Bentham and Mill. Bentham's famous statement, the greatest good for greatest number of people, that is the yardstick to judge the veracity, the authenticity of all the laws. Similarly, we have to judge the veracity of intellectual property laws today with this theory of greatest good to the greatest number of people and find out for ourselves whether intellectual property laws do conform to this theory or not. Mill argued, John Stuart Mill argued that the moral worth of actions is to be judged in terms of their consequences. He was for a cost benefit analysis through an economic lens. He said rights follow only from calculations of collective welfare. That means the greatest good to the greatest number of people. And he also said that natural rights are bullshit on the stilts. So they were positivists. So we try to apply those theories. If a person is there, and we say that we give him property claim for his effort so that he becomes rich and is able to fend for himself. Now we take the example of J.K. Rawlings, one of the greatest authors of our times. So John Locke would say, she worked hard in drawing from a long tradition of wizard and coming of age tales and so deserves copyright in her Harry Potter books. Hegel would say, the writing of those books literally helped make her who she actually is or helped her more fully realize who she really is. Therefore, we must grant her copyright. And Bentham would say, if we give a guarantee of future copyright to her, she will be encouraged to create more and more. So we see different jurisprudential theories coming together in the application to intellectual property rights. So in the current century, intellectual property is under constant strain. We have various goals to pursue. We have the goals of education. We want more and more people to be educated, consumer protection, food security, public health, entertainment, human rights, development, national sovereignty. So all these goals, a particular law, for example, intellectual property law is, ex is expected to enhance all these social goals. Is it really possible? Well, if we enhance one, the other 
may be sacrificed. So what we are trying to do is by pulling and pressurizing, we are trying to create a situation of a balance, which is extremely difficult to be say. Now, IP skepticism. With this, I would like to just briefly mention about IP skepticism also. Why should one person have the exclusive right to possess and use something which all people could possess and use concurrently? That is a fundamental question. Intellectual property, by granting intellectual property, we say that something belongs, belongs exclusively to the owner of intellectual property. So when the same thing can be enjoyed by all, why are we restricting it? Stealing a physical object involves depriving someone of the object taken, whereas taking an intellectual property deprives the owner neither of possession nor of the use of that object. For example, if I have a car, how many persons can I invite in the car? Maybe four, four more persons or five more persons or six, maybe depending upon the size of the car. But if I have a book, say a digital book, how many people can I invite to read the book? Limitless. So the skepticism of intellectual property says that when it is physically possible to distribute intellectual property to all, why do we have such laws? So there is a point in this theory also, which we shall discuss. Intellectual property, they say, needlessly give higher prices to consumers. And further argument for this skepticism is that new inventions are always dependent on some extent or existing knowledge. Even one of the greatest or the greatest scientists that the world has ever known, Isaac Newton, is known to have commented that if I have seen further than others, it is because I have been standing on the shoulders of giants. So he acknowledged those scientists who came before him. So this theory says that why do we grant intellectual property at all when the creative activity has de is dependent upon the previously created works, right? So we have to be mindful of these theories when we come to deciding complex questions of law. Now, I would also like to highlight uh, the interface between human rights and intellectual property rights. Article 27 of UDHR, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, part one says that everyone has the right to freely, right freely to participate in the cultural life of the community, to enjoy the arts and to share in scientific advancement and its benefits. So what does it mean if we apply this to intellectual property? That means every body has a right to share in the scientific advancement, in the creative activity. And second says, everyone has the right to protection of moral and material interests resulting from any scientific, literary, or artistic production of which he is the author. So the two parts of Article 19, they seem to be cutting across each other. One says, one em emphasizes on the rights of the public to share, share in everything. If there is a new medicine, everybody should have the right to share it. And the same breath, point two says that if somebody has created a medicine or something else, then he should have exclusive right on that so that he can earn money out of it. He can recover his investment. So I would say that these two are seemingly opposite to each other, but they are not actually opposites. They may seem to be opposites. They are just tools to balance to create a right balance for intellectual property. What is the extent of ownership? To what extent ownership can go? To what limit ownership can be put to? And how we can increase sharing? So if we are able to draw that balance, then I think we are able to achieve the objective of intellectual property too. So in these days, there has been a debate on private interest and public interest. Private interest versus public interest is a one of the famous and most important topics of intellectual property law today. So if we draw a circle like this and call it public interest, where would you like to draw private interest? This is a question to you. So I cannot wait for the answer to you. Otherwise, it would have been more interesting because there could be many renditions of this. But I would like to state what I feel. I feel that private interest lies within public interest because public interest is all encompassing includes everybody and one private individual. Normally this is in intellectual property, we say that private interest belongs to the interest of the owner of intellectual property and public interest belongs to the consumers 
of intellectual property right so with this i would like to proceed now first i would like to draw the attention draw your attention to patent laws we have in the last few years we have seen three very important cases first has been natco versus bear corporation in which a compulsory license the first and only compulsory license granted by india was there then rosh versus sipla and novartis versus union of india now what happened in this case this case in these all three cases the common ground was a multinational company on the one side which was which had come up with a blockbuster a very great medicine and it was priced very high in indian context it was priced say for example for a month's dosage you require a couple of lakh rupees so the question arose in this country how many people can actually afford such medicines what is the relevance of these medicine in indian parlance right therefore the courts were proactive and what they did was applying the various doctrines of law for example applying compulsory licensing and interpretation of section 3d of the patent act the court declined them their patent rights the three multinational companies now this created a very a great uproar in the international market that how can india do it and it also presents on the one side we have a public interest argument on which the court was riding but we have the other argument as well so let us see the other argument too to balance the two for example how drugs are made for example today the whole world is suffering from covid 19 we are frantically searching for a drug not imagine tomorrow somebody comes up with a drug then we will expect him to give the drug for example that person keeps a a big price for the drug he says that well i have invested so much of money in experiments i have put everything to on this so i should be allowed to earn money now now then if the whole world comes up and says that no no we need it and we need it cheap we cannot allow you to make that much money so who is right in this situation and who is wrong if today we say that nobody is will be able to earn from covid 19 vaccine or medicine that comes by then people may not be encouraged to invest in so much of research because that is costly that is time consuming right especially we see that first in order to cure something let us take the example of a disease in order to cure something in order to make a medicine we know the disease but we do not know the medicine so somebody has to come up with an idea of making the making the medicine and then he has to proceed into various directions so he has to do due diligence and experiments in various ways and many most of the experiments if the person if the person who is tasked with taken up the task to invent a medicine he goes into 20 different paths of creating the medicine maybe in 19 he would fail so all that investment will be lost investment only in one he might succeed so he takes the risk he does all the experimentation and after being successful it goes into the testing phase first it has to be tested on in in the laboratory then it has to be tested on animals then it has to be tested on human beings and then he has to approve get approvals including marketing approvals with all this once he comes to the market then a generic manufacturer comes up he says that well, i can make the medicine cheaper than you so i would say that generic manufacturer he had ready made everything with himself he did not make an investment in any of the above aspects so he will of course be cheaper than the person who has been able to invent it so and then there are other tools for example tools of compulsory license that we have seen tool of infringement and counter claim he can infringe his patent and counter claim that the patent itself was invalid so we say that on the one hand we have seen multinational companies fleecing the poor countries multinational companies even in pharmaceuticals they are pricing exorbitantly but at the same time even the generic manufacturers are also doing some kind of cheating by just picking up the inventions by some other persons so we have to really which who is right in this situation law should side with whom that is a fundamental question of intellectual property law and there is no one answer to this so the idea here is to just let us all work together to find answers to such perplexing questions let us turn to the domain of copyright now 
we had the famous delhi university photocopy case in which we also had a chance to participate so what happened what was happening in delhi university in brief that there were course packs something like this now for example in the course of ma of economics the teachers have prescribed 10 different books and the students are required to read two or three chapters from each book now it is just not possible and some of those books are foreign books and they are very costly books and it is not possible for students to buy 10 costly books for one subject and they have to sub study many subjects so what was happening in delhi university was that there was a photocopy shop inside delhi school of economics we are just taking the example of economics but the same is applicable elsewhere as well so he would note that what the professors have prescribed so he would photocopy those on those very chapters from different books and make course packs and those course packs then he would photocopy for example he knows there are so many students in ma course and all of them would come to buy those course packs he would make them already before the session starts and it was very easy it was practical and affordable for the student so a 300 page course pack would cost something like 200 rupees so this was happening so the publishers filed a suit for copyright infringement saying that the the photocopy guy and delhi university have infringed the copyright of those publishers so the issue was we know section 40 14 of copyright act exhaustively lists various rights and section 52 grants those exceptions to rights it's fair dealing exceptions so the question before the court was whether the making of course packs by delhi university photocopy shop falls within 14 or within 52 if it falls within 52 then of course it is not a wrong it is not copyright infringement but it falls into the white portion of 14 then of course it is copyright infringement and that is what precisely the case was right now section 521 i of the copyright act which is about fair dealing it says a fair dealing in reproduction of any work by a teacher or pupil in the course of instruction so all that we had to demonstrate before the court was that these course packs are covered within this expression the reproduction of any work by a teacher or pupil in the course of instruction in the course of instruction so at the outset we drew this chart and presented it to the court we said that the exemption is only through the expression course of instruction now course of instruction is comprised of two words instruction and course instruction means teaching and education and course this word course can be used as a noun as well as a verb now if we use it as a noun course of instruction means a program like kaun sa course kar rahe ho and the person says ma economics or llb that is also the meaning of the word course when it is used as a noun it means program of education or teaching like ma or ba or llb now in this case we argued that our law permits reproduction in the entire program of education for example a semester or the full course of ma for example two years when the legal phrase is the reproduction of any work by a teacher or pupil in the course of instruction in the course of instruction right so the course of instruction would be like two years of ma or three years of ba so that is all permitted well that is the widest possible interpretation of the word but then we also highlighted another interpretation that is verb if we consider course as a verb it becomes a process that means process of education or teaching now this process in this sense is capable of being interpreted in two ways one is a narrow interpretation that means the course means reproduction is permissible only in classroom when the teaching is taking place and we highlighted that is not possible the classrooms do not have photocopiers and second is even in the verb sense when we take course as a verb it accommodates a wider interpretation interpretation which means reproduction is permissible in the entire span of the course right during the entire span of the course so we demonstrated to the court that this expression course of instruction 
there are two wider interpretations possible and one narrow and the narrow interpretation is totally impractical so if we choose wider interpretation then the practice of photocopying that is going on in delhi university becomes legal and the court the high court of delhi sided with us completely and agreed with us all right therefore the new jurisprudence of in copyright law emerged and this is a very path breaking case and because we have a paucity of time so i wanted to discuss parallel importation so i skip that and um, uh or please let me know how much time do i have so we have uh, 10 minutes more how much 10 minutes more because uh, we have another speaker as well Probably yeah yeah okay so okay all right all right so, so i won't like to impinge on his time so i like to finish early and uh, i would like to say uh, state here the saying of a great jurist plato he said for are not money and virtue like the two scales of a balance as one goes up the other goes down aristotle regarded the in institution of property as indestructible and ultimately a positive force aristotle based on his based his opposition to common ownership on utility utilitarian grounds he was of the opinion that if we remove all property from the society then no one takes proper care of the objects that are not his we have all the right to go to the public park but we do not take care of public park as much as we take care of our own house so people who hold things in common tend to burn more than those who own them personally that is was also the opinion of aristotle hesiod the greek poet of 7th century bc he was also of the opinion that he favored common ownership but at the same time he saw various difficulties now we see lenin on the other hand he said he is known to have said private property is robbery and a state based on private property is a state of robbers who fight to share in the spoils do we really agree saint augustine of hippo had said that property less society can exist only in heaven that means it is it is a common aspiration to do away with property but have we been able to do away with property so we are i would like to take you back to our thesis of property what was said by the philosophers long time back that law and property are born together and they die together this is what bentham had said so property is very dear and it continues to be dear so intellectual property is dear too and extremely dear and extremely important for the society we see so many we need more and more inventions and it is the property nature of knowledge that induces creative activity so property intellectual property is good but at the same time it is good when a proper balance is maintained it should not be too proprietary proprietary in nature we should it should also be sharing the element of sharing should always be there along with property so as long as we are able to make a balance it will be good for all so has there ever been a period where there was no property it is difficult to say so there has never been a period the vision of an ideal property less world must be grounded not in collective memory but in collective longing so property lessness has to pass through if you want to achieve a state of where there is no property we have to pass through property first so i would like in the end i would like to quote from the poem of lao chu one of the greatest mystics so he said he is believed to have said stretch a bow to the very full and you will wish you had stopped in time temper a sword to its very sharpest and the edge will not last long so all he says is that if you stretch the law of intellectual property to the extreme then it will break and if we sharpen the sword of intellectual property too much then the, its edge will itself break so he is also pointing towards a balance so we all are discovering that balance our law making processes our judicial interpretations are all geared towards achieving that right balance so thank you so much and it was a great pleasure to to be able to speak to you thank you very much over to you ma'am
Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for such an informative and rich session. We are getting an overwhelming response from the viewers' side. Uh, and now, uh, it is often said that when we appreciate excellence, we make it the part of our own. I feel privileged to welcome our esteemed speaker, multi-talented and immensely intellectual luminary, Professor S.C. Roy, Dean Research and Development, Chanakya National Law University, Patna. Sir is also the Director, Center for Innovation, Research and Facilitation in Intellectual Property for Humanity and Development. He has teaching experience of about 23 years. His areas of interest are jurisprudence, criminology, labor law, corporate law, intellectual property law, insurance law, legal research methodology, human rights, sociology of law, and English literature. He has credit of about 65 papers, research papers being published in renowned national and international journals. He has authored and edited many books. Some of them are an analytical study of intellectual property rights in India, lectures on intellectual property law, and intellectual property rights, a prismatic view, working of patents, law and pharmaceutical implications, information security, law and governance. He has participated and presented papers in more than 100 national and international seminars and workshops. He has chaired many sessions of the national seminars and also organized various seminars, symposiums and workshops at CNLU. He has served as member of various academic and administrative committees and also held the responsibility of academic and research coordinator of CNLU from July 2009 to March 2017. He has addressed judicial officers, insurance trainees, entrepreneurs, NGOs, trainees of disaster management, and participants of orientation program. He had been visiting professor come resource person in Judicial Academy, Patna, NIPER, Hazipur, Rajendra Agricultural University, Pusa, BIPARD, Valmi, Patna, NIRDA, Patna, and UGC, ASC, Lucknow University. He is on the editorial board of a Journal of Asia for Democracy and Development, a national journal of comparative law. He is the life member of Insti Indian Institute of Insurance, Mumbai, Indian Society of Criminology, Chennai, Indian Society of Labor Economics, Associate Member of Indian Institute of Public Administration, New Delhi, All India Teachers Educators, All India Law Teachers Congress, Indian Council of Arbitration, New Delhi, UGC Academic Staff College, Nanital. He is also the member of Asian Society of International Law. Sir, we are keenly awaiting for the session and the audience is all yours, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Am I uh, visible? Am I visible and audible? Sir, you are audible, but uh, visibility is not there. Uh, how so to I'm... connect? How to connect? Because uh, which button should I uh, click? Uh, share the screen? No, it's camera. Camera is on. Camera is on. Yes. Camera is yes. Camera is on. Camera is on. Okay. Uh, please, sir. Uh, is there? Uh, I think there is a technical problem. Yeah, yeah. I am calling some my colleague. He will do it. Ravi, sir, please. Uh, Camera is on, but uh, it is not working. Just a minute. Yes. Camera is on. How to stream your powered by? 
it is not just a minute i am calling Okay, let's. I uh, will start, and I will call someone. Uh, it is uh, not uh, visible. Yes, the voice is audible, but uh, it is clear, but uh, not the. I think uh, the camera is not working properly. Your camera is not working. Okay, let us start. Someone will come. I have asked. Okay. Sir, uh, you may reconnect, please. Yeah. You may reconnect. First of all, disconnect it and reconnect. And after connecting, just allow your camera and mic accept. Okay, let us uh, huh. then I will have to call first. You just leave the studio and then again enter into the studio. Okay, okay, I'm calling. There is a red button. Uh, yeah. I should in leave. Yes, studio. leave and studio. then reconnect. And then again re Yeah. Yes, sir, you are visible now. Okay. Visible. Okay. Namaskar. Yeah, Namaskar. Namaskar. Achha, yeah. Okay. Namaskar. Welcome you. Uh, Madam Vipakshi Joshi. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sir, Tell my you, camera person. Camera ko thoda sa niche. Hello. Camera ko thoda sa niche. Niche ko kar lijiye. Thoda sa slide down kar lijiye, please. Ab theek hai. Okay, sir. Yes. Uh, uh, SD Sharma Shah ko pranam. एंड डी के भट्ट सर को मेरा नमस्कार सर थैंक्स इन द वेरी बिगनिंग दैट यू हैव गिवन मी अपॉर्चुनिटी एंड दीपाक्षी मैम आल्सो सर फ्रॉम वेयर प्रोफेसर रमन मित्तल हैज लेफ्ट आवर डिस्कशन आई विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम देयर एज द टॉपिक ऑफ दिस वर्कशॉप इज dimensional issues and challenges of intellectual property rights we are fortunate uh, to one person i think that 
डंकल एज इन द उरुग्वे राउंड ऑफ गेट डंकल प्रोपोजल वॉज इन ग्रेट वॉज इन न्यूज एंड बिकॉज ऑफ डंकल प्रोपोजल इन उरुग्वे राउंड ऑफ गेट we could know about intellectual property rights before that very few of us were knowing what intellectual property is think that later on we know very well that from 1st january 1995 the gat uh, before that in the april 1994 gat concluded into trips trade related intellectual property rights and from 1st january 1995 we have wto world trade organization and on the ground of gat uh, trips the all the signatory countries they were developed developing and least developed countries they were given 15 years 10 years moratorium period that they can change their ipr laws although india had ipr laws from the very beginning and uh, we have patents act 1970 before that so we, we are not uh, new in intellectual property rights laws but because of the because of the uh, trips agreement we brought changes in patents law we move from process patent to product patent earlier we had before 1970 we had a, a product patent but in 1970 amendment uh, act we changed from uh, 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 we omitted product patent patents but later on again in 2005 we amended and it added in the patents act 1970 and then we know very well that uh, we have new legislations plant varieties farmers rights act sui generis legislation sui generis in the sense that it suits to a particular country a special law you can say although trips agreement says that the country should have minimum standard minimum standard minimum protection must be there why there should be protection it's a subject matter of discussion also uh, in this workshop as earlier professor ram mittal had said that co property is common but those who have invented the property created the property might have certain interest if that person is not protected not encouraged monetarily not uh, given impetus encouragement he will not further create he will not further innovate therefore in this sense he has to encourage for what purposes for the benefit of the society maximum good of the society as when a person writes a literature uh, under the copyright act he creates something for the better understanding mental development educational development of the uh, of humanity therefore for that purposes there is a protection to that author to that creator at the same time in the patents a person who is inventing something he is giving labor skill and judgment and in this way he invest his time mind and energy and naturally if there is a certain asset intellectually after the idea is invested and created asset then he is the owner of that property he must be given protection otherwise he will not be encouraged and new things will not come in the society in the market and people will not be benefited so encouragement pro protection is given for encouragement it is not prohibitory as uh, there was a talk uh, in the copyright section 52 it gives a relief it gives that uh, that the exemption is there on section 14 of the copyright act that yes the person owner has the right economic rights in the creation but at the same time that creation is for the public purposes not for economic exploitation rather for educational purposes and other purposes other dimensions are there but we see that uh, and in the same way in the patents law also as uh, natco case uh, uh, sir has mentioned professor raman mittal that uh, 
that there is a provision that uh, me, uh, lakhs of uh, rupees for a month package of medicine it was not beneficial so one thing is that there is a public purposes also in patents law that if the patent is not working properly then the government will not remain silent the government can seize that property as we have in that general property law also as earlier we had fundamental rights under article 191 f of the constitution right to property but later on it has been deleted and put in into article 300 capital a of the constitution although many people say that that right is a very strong rights right to property but it can be said that it is not a fundamental right it was earlier a fundamental right protected by chapter 3 of the constitution under article 32 but it is not now under article 32 so property yes of course the person who has created that property has interest but at the same time for whom this property is there for the public interest and this is why under trips agreement there is a rights for 20 years after that it enters into public domain and anyone can use that idea use that uh, invention creation everything so let us see that since we are living in this age of information and knowledge and this is a global uh, global era and we can understand very well now because of the pandemic situation that how people we have been suffering how are we now disconnected from the world because of the covid 19 so therefore we can understand better way in a better way about the globalization information technology and information services so in this respect we will see and we in the very beginning i would like to say that after the trips agreement after making amendments in our ip laws and legislation of new laws also biodiversity act geographical indications and protection acts registration and protection acts likewise plant varieties and farmers rights act as well as uh, uh, semi conductor acts layout design and uh, semi conductors act so many legislations design industrial design act 2000 we have legislated we have made our laws strong but it was still beyond the reach of the common people and this is why the government of india in 2016 brought a, a paper new ipr policy in 2016 seven points have been framed in that new ipr policy and that is first point ipr awareness outreach and promotion ipr awareness program it is a very very significant program that why the government of india took this first point awareness lack of awareness still many people are not knowing what is ipr intellectual property rights as earlier speaker professor mithal rightly said that property it's a broader concept and within that there is intellectual property although in our indian constitution we will see that there is no such clear cut in the uh, suppose even in a 300a capital a there is no mentioning of intellectual property so as per in america there is a mentioning of article 1 section 8 uh, section 8 that there is a intellectual property here it is not mentioned so that's why when it is not clearly mentioned in the uh, articles of the constitution of india how can people be aware of these things one other second awareness is that still people were aware of the patents many things we are uh, calling about patents it is his patents means monopoly P- people think about patent means mon- monopoly means ekadhikar that he has rights he can do everything but it is not so even the patent act 1970 is not a monopolistic rights because it has rights to the people other people also so uh, second thing is awareness related to even the school people are not knowing about the intellectual property it is not mentioned in the uh, course curriculum so awareness when it is not generated 
common to the students to the people then how can we be under can we understand groom and do research and do everything second objective is that general gener generation of ipr that is to stimulate the generation of ipr generation of ipr means creation of ipr first there should be awareness creation secondly there should be encouragement to generate and to create it is the thing that ip audit across the sectors will enable assessment and evaluation of the potential in specific sectors generation of the intellectual property property will be generated later on first there will be generation or creation of awareness and encouragement to the people to do something bring your ideas or dream into concrete uh, asset so generation and third concept is legal and legislative framework that ipr laws has to be legislated enacted in such a balanced way that it should be in favor of beneficial to the interest of the individual as well as it should be beneficial to the common people public at large also fourth policy is administration and management to modernize and strengthen uh, service oriented ipr administration this is the fourth policy fifth policy is commercialization of ipr as i was uh, delivering a lecture in an sina college patna on an sina memorial lecture uh, here one student asked me sir i have a hobby of painting drawing sketching so where shall i sell these things this is this is a problem people are not knowing even if they are creating something they are not in a position to commercialize earn money so commercialization sixth is enforcement and adjudication and in enforcement and education adjudication minimization of litigation is essential if there is a two litigation so many litigations then litigation cost is added to the intellectual property asset and ultimately the common people has to pay and it is very costly this is why litigation should be minimum and this is why arbitration was given uh, encouragement has been given encouragement uh, for the solution of the problems or the disputes related to ipr and the seventh and the most important uh, uh, that is the policy is the human capital development as we see that uh, uh, human capital development what does it mean it says that they ex expand human resources as generally we have heard about the human resource development as our hrd ministry is known as what are the human resources education uh, knowledge uh, attitude aptitude our behaviors intelligence these things are the human resources and we have to develop so intellectual property as copyright it is essential as without the books without literature in any discipline unless and until it is created unless and it is authored there can be no teaching there can be no development mental development there can be no physical uh, you, you know behavioral development and human development so that's why human capital development is the objective ultimate objective of this policy but i would like to say now that this is a policy paper whether the policy paper has been brought into practice yes of course some changes has been brought up dipp uh, department of intellectual property and promotion has been created copyright patents and so many things has been brought there and industrial in ministry of industry has been uh, assigned all these things that you develop all these things but see what are the issues and challenges as the title of the dimensional issues and challenges of intellectual property rights this is the topic of the workshop dimensional issues are so many as we see as uh, professor mittal said photocopier case yes of course it was in the in favor of the students 
naturally it should be it ought to be but what about the authors whether their uh, claim was not correct we have to think properly at the same time now because of the covid challenge now everything going on uh, online and now software are being software is being uh, uh, produced software so here in india software is protected under the copyright act because we say that software is nothing but expression but if it is taken as a functional one it should not be protected under copyright it should be protected under patents as here people are demanding that software should be protected under the patents law but it has not been amended under the indian ip legislation patents law 1970 it is still under the copyright law this is the issue that whether and there is a debate going on that software should be uh, patented or copyrighted or partly patented or partly copyrighted it should not be there because two things at a time cannot be is not possible there should be either copyright or patent but strong as the policy measure says strong legislation to protect the interest of the creators and the authors it is essential so software protection as we all know that nowadays it is vulnerable and pirated softwares are being sold the creators are at loss great loss second is that you know that on nowadays online movie online music this is going on now downloading of these things as well as without payment of any money so 3d piracy is also an, an issue and challenge nowadays how to check these menaces and how to provide protection to the creator producer author of these say so next is that in the patents law we talk about that patents every time but we seldom know that what is patents actually when a person invents something new novel non obvious or inventive steps and useful industrially then the person is granted rights that is known as patents so earlier in britain it was a letter patentia means open letter whoever was disclosing his invention was granted patents rights that is patents rights that rights to the inventor is known as patents through open letter through disclosure of the authority here in india as per uh, trips agreement we have 20 years time period whoever is granted patents but see what is our situation we have a great challenge in our country today we have a situation we are uh, we have started avoiding chinese goods or many other things we have uh, problems with china our neighbor we are talking about how to stop chinese import chinese goods to enter into indian territory and we should not use it our honorable prime minister has also indirectly said swami uh, aatmanirbhar bharat before that the this covid announcement aatmanirbhar bharat before that the government of india has started make in india uh, make in india program innovative india creative india program so all these programs have been started have been launched even in this uh, very nearest in covid period the government has of india has given the slogan vocal for local all these things are there one may ask me that why i am talking all these things what is connection with this patents law or intellectual property rights yes of course there is a connection even the policy paper of 2016 of ipr the word is that creative india innovative india yes is it merely a slogan it's not merely a slogan we will have to go back if you see that the intellectual property intellectual property industrial property as patents it it took uh, uh, you know root in or uh, genesis in paris convention of 1883 later on you see that we have a patent 
but uh, in 1979 there was a there, there was a amendment in paris convention and utility model was introduced in paris convention although we see that under trips model utility model or petty patent has not been introduced so and india is the signatory to this paris convention about 46 countries of the world and more than that and uh, of paris convention 130 countries are the signatory to the paris convention and they are somehow and directly or indirectly they are adopting petty patent policy see that if we are saying that we can become atmanirbhar self dependent we can uh, boost up our make in india made in india program successful through msme micro small and medium enterprises can we do with the help of patents only because patents require heavy investment it requires time to be granted also it requires heavy capital for protection also can the msme afford that money not possible china has been successful in doing that petty patent one application two patents this is the chinese slogan whereas in india and the uk and usa also i would like to talk about india that one application one patent it is our policy and as per the law also that one application will be granted only one patent whereas china is granting if someone has submitted the application and it is if it is not patentable or if it does not come uh, as per the test or quality of examination that it is not new or novel not uh, uh, you know inventive steps technological development then it can be give granted utility model or petty patent or another name is innovation patent and with the help of, and it is granted up to 10 years not more than that 7 to 10 years 12 years in different different cases so and it is very cheap it is registered very quickly and people start using those inventions in their small scale industries since it is less costly less time taking therefore the micro small and medium enterprises are in a position to thrive manufacture goods and sell it at lower cost to the neighboring countries or any other every any countries and they are successful so if we want to make ourselves atmanirbhar then we will have to give boost up to this petty patent but there has been a debate negative debate against this petty patent policy so that's why that in the very beginning i said that in the policy paper ipr policy 2016 policy is there but implementation is we are far behind and we have a challenge now of nirbhar how to do that so innovative patent patents or innovation patent you can say it will be in between the claim of invention as to prior art prior art means the knowledge to the people in between that so it will be useful for the small scale industries for the traders businessmen for the msme and we can create wealth employment and we can develop and we can export also economically we can develop and we can become strong our investment will go earning will go to another areas and we will be happy so one challenge is there but there are so many barriers in this way another is uh, one we are know, uh, knowing very well that we are living in the age of biotechnology we are living in this age and plants and uh, animals and many other things we are extracting we are making goods so with the help of biotechnology we can grow more and more biotechnology industry is uh, is increasing in increasing order growing more and more but whether we are we have given any recognition any protection or any support to the biotechnology industry we will see that under the patents act 
the concept section 3 we will see the patents act it talks about which is not patentable subject matter which is not patentable there is nothing positive like what are the subject patentable subject matters and you will see that many things are mentioned under section 3 which debars even the plants and uh, 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 traditional knowledge okay i am not saying that the traditional knowledge should be exploited by someone else but at least there should be sharing of the knowledge so section 3d it is quite hard one in india we are not taking uh, care of the discovery we say invention means invention it should not be anywhere any any no one no even none has thought about, about it it is not possible even usa is giving discovery they are recognizing and people are taking benefit of that discovery what about our situation we should take care of that discovery should be recognized also so agriculture and horticulture many things many things uh, uh, I, as you see that nowadays i have heard about sri vidhi se dhan ki kheti paddy farming through sri vidhi when i heard and saw uh, doing the things planting paddy seedlings i thought i have seen already it is already available in our community see that plant varieties and farmers right breeding of the plants cutting budding of the plants seed as seed rights we have farmers are knowing all these things but they are not aware of how to do these things how to market these things so negative rights under the under section 3 of the patents act it is also a great challenge it is also a great hindrance in our progress so another thing is related to uh, to electronic goods as we know very well electronic goods that we are living in that analog electronic goods our mobile washing machine many other things ac air conditioner that uh, printers computers they have the small silicon chips and the chips you see that it is very very important we have layout design and semiconductor layout design act 2000 and you see that here we have legislated one legislation sui generis legislation it is uh, protecting we we have followed uh, the usa and the act of 1984 and along with that we have this legislation but at the same time the chips are being pirated also the uh, scientists or the persons who are skilled in the trade are not in a position to exploit so chips is also semiconductor and layout design is also very very important and significant part of this ipr regime and we have to protect this chips see that uh, so that we can develop our industry businesses electronic businesses and this is why national institute of electronics has been uh, established by the government of india under ministry of electronics and here in patna also one nilet national institute of uh, electronics and telecommunication is here established there is an institute so we see that electronics chips it is also a subject matter of a challenge before us now another part that is a geographical indications biodiversity and plant varieties and farmers rights that one can be said plant variety when one can exclude biodiversity geographical indications you see this is nothing but a community property it cannot be individual property and but geographical indications it is ownership lies to the people of the area not any individual one and it is one of the most important uh, aspects of the trade and so gi it is most important we should preserve but awareness is lacking as i can give uh, cite an example that when i went to kerala in cochin university i was in a program i was handed over one uh, packet of rice it was called palakkad rice palakkad rice when i 
came back to Patna and proved it. The taste was same as in Bihar. There was lal dhan, lal paddy. Rice was a red one, and it was a, it had the same taste. But see that the people of that area saved that rice, traditional rice, and now they are growing and they are exploiting. They are selling that rice in the market, and the cost is hundred fifty rupees per kg. So whether we could have saved the traditional seeds, as people nowadays talk about, that nowadays there is no taste in medicine, uh, taste in vegetables, taste in rice, taste in wheat. Nowadays we have, uh, you know, modified seeds, genetic seeds. It's a challenge. We need food security. We need to grow more grain. but at the same time we are losing the traditional varieties here if we can save or could have saved the traditional varieties we can grow and sell them also and we we can be in a position to make new varieties new seeds new things also so uh, geographical indications as you see artisans special many people have their special qualities special regions as kanjivaram silk bara varanasi silk bhagalpuri silk as uh, in raipur also there is a silk cloths they are ma being manufactured so many artisans are there as our prime minister says vocal for local unless and until there is a petty patents unless and until there is innovation patent we cannot become vocal for local only by saying we cannot do that unless we are granted certain rights and in this way if this patent is granted to the people naturally the people will be happy and there will be encouragement to the local innovation of course it can be locally granted not it's, it it cannot be recognized nationally or universally sorry otherwise it will fall under patents law so innovation patent is a demand of today it's a issue as well as challenge also so what we see that entire ipr either it be copyright it be patents trademark as in trademark also there is a comparative advertisement it is issue and challenge that why there is a uh, query and concern of the people the traders that if mr a is advertising his uh, mustard oil that it is pure why mr a is taking name of b that it is better than a bit better than b so you must uh, develop uh, your own trade your uh, you know advertisement of your own goods in a way that it is should be used by the people and the people will come to you yourself themselves and in this way you will grow let others grow also so comparative advertisement is an issue in the trademark so in this way the 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 workshop title as a issues and challenges are the various one now we are coming across with these issues and but we have, there is a yet to solution so patent solution uh, that is the innovation patent it is must it is essential we must immediately we should take care of and other things related to copyright software patenting these are the issues these are the challenges before us thank you hello yes sir hello Uh, yes sir uh, am i audible yeah yeah thank you sir thank you for the insightful lecture on the topic i heartily thank our dignitaries that uh, they have created time out of their tight schedules to add value to kumaon university's conscientious efforts at pushing academic frontiers in a way that can benefit our society during this time and uh, we are now opening the floor for the questions and uh, participants if you have any questions you may send to chat box uh, 
now uh, I have sent some questions in the chat box to uh, Professor Mittal. Okay, so. so all right, so. Okay, how much time do we have? Uh, so we have 15, 20 minutes more. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'll try and dispose of quickly. So the first question is, uh, what are the what are parallel importing with respect to copyright? So basically, parallel importation is a very important area under intellectual property law. Under all spheres of intellectual property law, whether it's copyright, trademark, patents, etc. So let me address it with regard to copyright. See, what is what exactly is parallel importation? Parallel importation means that there is an official channel. For example, in case of books, Oxford University Press, let us say, has a distributor in India, and the and the press is press is there in UK, and the books are printed in UK and brought to India through the official channel. Now, can somebody go to, for example, another country, say UK, and buy Oxford University books? for example, from the UK market and bring them to India and start selling without any authorization from Oxford University Press. So this is precisely what is meant by parallel importation. This is important from trademark law perspective also. And we had a very famous case that is Samsung uh, versus Kapil Vatwa. And um, for example, in that case, somebody goes to Singapore and buys uh, printers, computer printers and brings them to India. For example, he buys 1000 printers from the open market in Singapore, brings them to India and starts selling. And those Samsung printers are already available in India through the official channel of Samsung. So the private person who does so goes to Singapore and brings those printers. His activity is known as parallel importation. So we are like uh, the law is quite interesting and challenging as far as parallel importation in copyright as well as trademark is concerned. Let me address the issue of trademark first. This case went into trademark and uh, in the courts, and we had a different opinion. First was the single judge of Delhi High Court. He opined, he decided that parallel importation is not possible under Trademarks Act. So he termed this practice as illegal under Trademarks Act. Then it was appealed to the division bench. The division bench said that parallel importation is legal. He, the division bench read the same law and decided that the law is permissive. That is section 30 of Trademarks Act, section 30, subsection three of Trademarks Act is permissive of parallel importation. Then the case was now appealed and the appeal is pending before the Supreme Court of India. So a uh, livelihood of a lot of business is dependent upon what the Supreme Court, what the Apex Court of India will decide finally with regard to parallel importation vis-a-vis -vis Trademarks Act. And turning to copyright, law now vis-a-vis -vis parallel importation. Um, you have rightly stated that a provision was uh, uh, sought to be incorporated by way of 2012 amendments, which are the most recent amendments to the Copyright Act. That is right. Um, the thing is that we do not have much judicial guidance with respect to parallel importation. As far as copyright law is concerned, we have all along we have like we had a penguin case long back, many, many, I think at least two or three decades back. In this case, in penguin, penguin's case, parallel importation was stated to be illegal under copyright law. And just to do away with the decision of the penguin, the effect of penguin's case, the copyright law was amended. And it was amended. And now in uh, section 14A2, it says, that uh, 1482 is, is is something which says that uh, the right of the owner to issue copies of work to the public not being copies already in circulation, not being copies already in circulation. This expression holds the key as to whether the practice of parallel importation is legal or not legal in India. And what happened in, after this amendment, what happened in 2012? And between that, there was another case. Hmm? John Willis case, which was decided by Delhi High Court. And that case, that decision has been criticized a lot, in which we can say the court held that parallel importation is not permissible within the Copyright Act. But then that it did not, the decision did not match the facts of the case. It did not, it was not a correct interpretation of law. Therefore, the law was thought to be changed again. 
though there was no need and it was thought to be changed but because there was an uproar by foreign publishers lobby so this proposed amendment was taken off the bill when the bill was finally introduced in the parliament it did not have the the explanation to infringing copy right to the definition of infringing, infringing copy through which this law of parallel importation was sought to be reformed but in my understanding if we interpret section 14 um, in the light of the whole act i find that parallel importation is permissible irrespective of what has been decided whatever has been decided it is possible and it is legal and in trademark law it is legal as far as the dvn bench is decision is concerned but it is pending before the supreme court of india so in a nutshell we say the the law of the land today is the dvn bench decision and it says parallel importation is legal in case of trademark law in copyright law it is yet to be decided by uh, the court what happened the, we wrongly say that in 2010 in uh, john willis case it was decided it was not decided because the matter there was parallel exports not imports so the court said that the activity was illegal but that activity was parallel exports so we can't say that john willis case of 2010 is enumerative of parallel importation in india it is an open question and my understanding is parallel importation is legal okay then uh, what else is the question let me see mm. uh, yesterday uh, yesterday's order under section 69a of it act yeah, they, <laughs> they say what is the difference between blocking and uh, mm. this uh, panning so block can be is more technical in nature though the distinction is not so well defined but blocking is more technical more technological and banning is more legal so normally when you, when the government does so it does so on both the counts it bans through through law through order through direction and it also stops the technical feasibility of it all right so that's what i can say is there any other question um uh, sir uh, so i see a question on damages right so as we say um, how are ipr infringement damages calculated so we all know that damages are of various kinds you know with various orientation we have compensatory damages we have general and special damages we have liquidated and unliquidated damages we have a damages the measure of which is loss of profit we have restitutional damages we have disgorgement damages which are we have statutory damages and we have nominal damages and more and more so see a lot of theories come into play when we calculate when the courts calculate damages in intellectual property matters and one of the most important theories is is the restitutional or disgorgement damages for example that uh, a person utilizes somebody's intellectual property unauthorizedly and he is able to earn some uh, profits because of that so the court can not only issue an injunction but also grant disgorgement damages that means the the profit which that person that unauthorized user has earned because of an infringement of intellectual property can also be disgorged then loss of profit can also be a measure the person if he is because of somebody else he was not able to use his own property so had he been able to use the property he would have been able to earn certain profits so that can also be a measure so basically these theories of tortious of tort law are well accommodated within um, intellectual property damages principles and i will also say that for example in case most of the practice of intellectual property is done through licensing activity and in case of breach of a license what the damage it would be so that would be an interplay of damages between because damages is a concept within contract law as well as tort law so when it is a licensing matter and licensing of intellectual property every license is a contract and a breach of license would attract not only uh, damages under contract law but also damages under tort law as well so but the, at the same time the, the the principle the cardinal principle is that in one action the person should not be allowed to recover double damages all right so that is the interplay and uh, is there any other question Uh, from professor roy uh, dr suresh yeah. chandrapani uh, over to you uh, your voice is not coming you are not audible yeah audible ha yeah. ah, okay okay uh, uh, there is a question to professor roy uh, yeah. sir uh, are people aware of the provisions of the constitution uh, uh, other than those related to ipr yeah <laughs> uh your question is very marvelous question 
yeah people are aware of constitution more <laughs> than ipr of course but uh, as in the beginning I, uh, your question is uh, related to that as i said that it is not mentioned in the constitution of india uh, as in the american constitution actually even suppose it had been mentioned in the property under 300a or earlier under 191f it could have uh, people could have taken notice hmm. because constitution is a basic uh, you know uh, tenet hmm. of our country and people could have thought about that yes this is intellectual property and it is mentioned here and what it is but actually it is not mentioned so this is why i am drawing the attention that it should have been mentioned along with the property intellectual property should have been also although we are taking uh, you know our legislations are not unauthorized it is under the uh, schedule 7 and out of that we are making legislations ipr legislations but specifically there is no such article and had it been there i am sure that people would have been more aware of these uh, kind of ipr and i am i am frankly saying that it is dunkel's proposal that brought revolution in the world before that how many people of us are we are knowing about all these things and even in a teaching academia before 2000 people were not knowing about intellectual property mm-hmm. when i took this uh, uh, you know this uh, research work in tm bagalpur university i am the student of bagalpur university and when i uh, said there that i want to do research in uh, intellectual property people were surprised what are you saying who will guide you and frankly i am telling you that uh, one uh, i would like to tell name uh, honorable uh, professor kiran saxena she guided me she told me yes i i will guide you and she learned and did hard work and she guided me although i took support from various people various professors and one is among them professor sd sharma sir also i took his help also i frankly i i am grateful to you sir and uh, i took uh, suggestion and help from uh, uh, professor uh, sk verma of delhi university at that time she was in ili director also and she helped me so i took help from various people from different parts of the country and then i could do the work on ipr so i know the thing that how many people were knowing about the intellectual property and see that intellectual property and rights as uh, rightly professor mittal uh, delivered in the very beginning the jurisprudential concept when i teach in the class in the very few classes i discuss the jurisprudential aspect that proper intellect property and their rights three things it takes four five classes then it is clear that what property is and the concept of property so these things are there and distributive justice also related to as a, a you know kamesar singh versus state of bihar that case is very significant related to property and it is also relevant to this intellectual property also because private interest versus public interest as rightly professor mittal discussed earlier that private interest has to forego when there is a public interest as rightly it it has been said when article 39 b and c comes article 14 and 19 goes out so when there is a social uh, you know benefit economic and social justice then private justice has to be minimized so all these things all these aspects are it's a very very interesting paper interesting is trending is interesting subject and it is connected with jurisprudence as well as constitution as well as economic theory and social justice theory so it cannot be taken in isolation if i if someone is saying that i am teaching copyright law it is not isolated one has to be connected interconnected if someone is going to teach uh, gi geographical indications the person has to have understand trademark also if someone has to is going to teach plant varieties and farmers rights it means he has to understand, understand agriculture agricultural knowledge as well as agricultural laws also so many things are there in totality we have to learn and we have to disseminate and this is my uh, very very small uh, uh, sharing of the knowledge what i have learned till today so that's why sir uh, 
constitutional provision should be there and it will be create more and more awareness among the people sir anything more any sir, other question uh, i need a common i mean you and you get a common question to both of you well uh, how can ip law be simplified for the awareness of common people <laughs> okay pardon how me again law be simplified for the awareness of common people common man i mean the awareness you know as as, a, as a, i am telling you that uh, i have established a center in the patna objective is that and ipp as well as in the ministry of industry it is also trying to and cipm cipm is a uh, is has been established by the central government primary function is to create awareness awareness program although they are not funding but they are giving uh, academic support resource person support and uh, and for the dissemination of the ipr knowledge to the common people it requires to move village to village school to school in the primary sector it requires to go to the enter into the village tell the people what is ipr intellectual property and what are your property i see the traditional knowledge people have the traditional knowledge about so many herbs medicines i, I am sharing one example uh, my uncle was in a village as we know very well jaundice hum jante hain jaundice jaundice pilia bimari in jaundice doctors prohibit you to take any spices masale nahi khana hai adrak nahi khana hai uh, gol mirch nahi khana hai jaundice mein लेकिन वो हमारे एक अंकल थे यदि किसी को जॉन्डिस होती थी तो कहीं से एक रूट उखाड़ कर लाते थे कोई रूट एंड दैट रूट हैज टू बी यू नो पेस्टेड विथ गोल मिर्च हाँ काली मिर्च के साथ वो रूट पीस करके 14 डेज देते थे एंड द पर्सन वॉज क्योर तो मैंने सुना उस समय आई वॉज द स्टूडेंट ऑफ क्लास एट नाइन सो आई आज हिम अंकल दिस दिस Uh, uh, spice is harmful to the person who is suffering from jaundice you are putting these things but he told i am not knowing many things but i am immersing this medicine introducing this medicine and person is cured so many people are knowing about the medicines herbs can it be commercialized as you see that in uh, uh uti the people are using certain uh, uh you know oil they they use it in their body and they are free from mosquitoes in the remote areas so this is this knowledge can be commercialized many things we are knowing it should be commercialized as vermi compost nowadays it has been commercialized by agriculture sector vermi compost is nothing but a compost only worms are there so many worms are there and i have seen in my villages how people are making the compost in the pit with dung and other uh, you know leaves and other things uh, agriculture reduce so all these things we are knowing we, it can be marketed geographical indications many things are specialist you see that uh, one example i will tell you phutka uh phutka it is not known to everyone it is when there is a cloud you know thunder in the sky during this season rainy season it comes after the bursting of the earth that is uh, like a cauliflower bandha gobi hoti hai na to bandha gobi ki tarah wo ek hota hai usko kehte hain phutka phutka isliye kehte hain dharti phatkar nikalta hai और वो तब निकलता है जब आकाश में बादल गरजते हैं और वो झारखंड के हजारीबाग में होता है दैट इज स्पेशल वन नो अदर प्लेसेस इट कैन हैव व्हाई नॉट इट कैन बी कॉमर्शियलाइज्ड मार्केटेड एंड द पीपल बी बेनिफिटेड सो द मेनी थिंग्स आर देयर वी हैव लोकली बट वी आर नॉट यूजिंग इट जैसे आवर प्राइम मिनिस्टर हैज सेड दैट ईच एरिया हैज सम स्पेशलिटी ईच एरिया 
एक बार मैं महू की यात्रा पर था महू एम एच जहाँ आवर भीमराव अम्बेडकर साहब बर्थ प्लेस तो उस एरिया में एक एक खंडवा से ट्रेन जाती है उस रास्ते में एक प्लेस है जो भेली में है दो बड़ी बड़ी ऊंची पहाड़ियां हैं उसके नीचे वो और वहां एक मिठाई मिलती है दैट इज ए स्पेशल स्वीट्स कैन इट नॉट बी मार्केटेड अब वहां के लोगों को समझाएंगे कि भाई तुम्हारा ये जीआई है ये स्पेशलिटी है इस गुड्स का तुम मार्केटिंग करो ज्यादा से ज्यादा प्रोडक्शन करो और तुम बेचो और तुम्हें लाभ होगा बेनिफिट होगा तो वो लोग होंगे तो हम लोग जब तक गांव गांव जा करके लोगों को समझाएंगे नहीं स्कूल में जाके बच्चों को नहीं समझाएंगे तो इनोवेट नहीं कर पाएंगे इसीलिए इनोवेशन पेटेंट और इनोवेशन इज एसेंशियल आप आत्मनिर्भर भारत बनाना चाहते हैं जब तक आप पेटी पेटेंट की ओर नहीं जाएंगे जो चाइना गया है तो तब तक आप नहीं कर पाएंगे वाई नॉट जब मैं मैं प्रेजेंटेशन दे रहा था सिंगापुर में तो वहां भी मैंने प्रेजेंटेशन दिया वन एप्लीकेशन थ्री पेटेंट्स टूट भी ही है कैसे लोगों ने पूछा आप कैसे कहते हैं भाई मैंने कहा चाइना ने कर दिया चाइना वन एप्लीकेशन टू पेटेंट इफ सर्टेन इन्वेंशन इज नॉट पेटेंटेबुल यदि वो बार्ड है वो इन्वेंटिव स्टेप्स नहीं आ रहा उसमें तो वो क्या कर देता है पेटी पेटेंट दे देता है आप ले लो पेटी पेटेंट यानी उसका जो मेहनत है लेबर स्किल एंड जजमेंट जो इन्वेस्टमेंट है बेकार नहीं गया वो कॉमर्शियल एमएसएमई में काम आ गया और वही लो कॉस्ट इन्वेंशन नाउ इट इज इन प्रोडक्ट फॉर्म एंड इट इज सेलिंग आप कहते हैं चाइना से मुकाबला आप मुकाबला कैसे करेंगे अनलेस एंडिल है यू हैव दिस टेक्नोलॉजी आपके यहां पेटी पेटेंट पर बैन है नहीं है वेहमेंटली इवन द पार्लियामेंटेरियंस है अपोज्ड इट आप कैसे रोकेंगे क्या एमएसएमई को है इतनी हिम्मत इतना कैपिटल है कि वो पेटेंट्स खरीद सके और उसको प्रोटेक्ट भी कर सके नॉट पॉसिबल तो हमें डाइल्यूट करना और भी कंट्रीज हैं नॉट ओनली चाइना जापान अदर कोरिया 46 कंट्रीज दे आर गिविंग पेटी पेटेंट्स इनोवेशन पेटेंट्स एंड दे हैव इन्वॉल्व द स्कूल स्टूडेंट्स ऑल्सो छोटे छोटे क्लास एट से बच्चों को इन्वॉल्व किया है क्रिएटिविटी में इन्वॉल्व किया है और जिसके चलते वो उन बच्चों में इनोवेटिव कैपेसिटी आ गई है और जो इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट इनोवेट करते हैं वो तो अलग है एंड दे आर ग्रोइंग दे आर कॉमर्शलाइजिंग ऑल दीज इनोवेशन ऑल दीज नॉलेज बट वी आर लैगिंग बिहाइंड वी आर ओनली टॉकिंग वी आर नॉट एक्चुअली डूइंग एनी थिंग सो वी विल हैव टू एमेंड अवर लाइज लेसन दिस इज वाई मैंने जो डिस्कशन किया है यहाँ कि वट आर द इशूज एंड वट आर द चैलेंजेस इशूज तो ये सब हैं अब जैसे सर ने कहा कि कॉपियर कौ, ठीक है लड़के खुश हो गए सर लेकिन आपकी ही बुक को यदि सर छाप छाप के बेचना शुरू करें तो आपको क्या मिलेगा वट यू विल गेट जो कि आपने लेबर स्किल एंड जजमेंट दिया आपकी आपका जो बुक है बहुत अच्छी बुक है आई हैव रेड इट सर ने जो लिखा है मित्तल साहब ने लेबर ये ट्रेडमार्क पर बेस्ट बुक लेकिन उस बुक को यदि ये फोटो कॉपियर बेच बेच बेचना शुरू कर देंगे दो सौ रुपये में एक सौ रुपये में तो फिर ऑथर का ओरिजिनल बुक क्या होगा ऑथर को क्या मिलेगा वट अबाउट दी ऑथर उसको भी देखना है दूसरा अभी थ्री डी थ्री डायमेंशनल पैरेसी जो हो रही है उसका क्या होगा तो वी हैव टू सी बोथ बैलेंसिंग वन यही कारण इसका कारण क्या है इन्फोर्समेंट मैकेनिज्म इज लैकिंग आप देखेंगे कि टू थाउजेंड के पहले साइबर लॉ तो दो हजार में और साइबर लॉ अभी भी जो इन्फोर्समेंट एजेंसी हमारी है पुलिस फोर्स कितने लोगों को पता है हम लोग स्मार्टफोन यूज करते हैं लेकिन क्या हम लोगों को मालूम है कि उसमें कितने फीचर हैं और कहा हमारी प्राइवेसी खत्म हो रही है उसमें आता है कुकी अब कुकी पर जब तक आप नहीं प्रेस करेंगे तब तक वो ओपन होगा ही नहीं दूसरा तो आप सारा का सारा इंफॉर्मेशन आप जा रहा है डेटा जा रहा है हम लोग फेसबुक यूज करते हैं दड़ने के साथ फोटो पेस्ट पोस्ट करते हैं लिखते हैं आप देखें क्या वो प्राइवेसी रह जाता है नहीं रहता है तो हम लोग अवेयर नहीं है दिस इज माई अवेयरनेस इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग अवेयरनेस जनरेट करना क्रिएट करना बहुत जरूरी है और आईपीआर का यदि अवेयरनेस क्रिएट किया जाता है इस देश में अलग अलग जहां जहां जब जो लोग हैं तो एक तो इंटेलेक्चुअल डेवलपमेंट कॉपीराइट प्रोटेक्शन क्यों दिया जाता है कि यू शुड नॉट यू नो अभी जो यूजीसी ने प्लेगरिज्म की बात की है वाई देर इज चेक ऑन प्लेगरिज्म 
दूसरों का आर्टिकल अपना नाम लिख देते हैं कहते हैं मेरी आर्टिकल है एक तो ये हुआ चोरी करते हैं दूसरा ये एकेडमिक टिप दूसरी बात ये होती है कि हम लोग क्या करते हैं कट पेस्ट करके लिख लेते हैं क्रिएटिविटी नहीं है क्रिएटिविटी इज एसेंशियल क्यों क्रिएटिविटी जरूरी है जस्ट एक एग्जाम्पल मैं दूंगा मैं कि जैसे ही सेशन शुरू होता है आपका तो आपके नए बच्चे आते हैं वो पूछते हैं कि आई की कौन सी बुक लें तो हम सजेस्ट करेंगे रमन मित्तल साहब का ले लो किसी और का ले लो किसी और का ले लो इस बुक का मतलब क्या है किसी सर्टेन ऑथर का ले लो शर्मा साहब का ले लो जोशी साहब का ले लो क्यों ले लो क्योंकि वो बुक इतना सिंप्लीफाइड वे में है कि बच्चे पढ़ेंगे तो इजी वे में समझ जाएंगे और वो सिंपल वे में कौन लिख सकता है वही लिख सकता है who has chewed and digested, assimilated, जैसे हम भोजन करते हैं चबा करके पेट में डालते हैं और अच्छी तरह से पच जाता है तब वो हमारा जो छोटी आंत का विलाई है वो एब्जॉर्ब करके ग्लूकोज एंड मिनरल्स एंड प्रोटीन जो भी हो हमारे बॉडी को देता है और समूची बॉडी में वो जाता है ब्लड के माध्यम से वह काम उस टीचर ने किया है बहुत मेहनत किया है उस टीचर ने इसीलिए वो बुक अच्छी है उसमें फ्लो है कनेक्टिविटी है मीनिंग है अदरवाइज बुक अच्छी नहीं हो सकती बहुत सारी बुक हम देखेंगे मार्केट में दो तीन पेज पढ़ने के बाद रखो हटाओ क्यों क्योंकि तो उसमें उतना वर्क नहीं हुआ है दिस इज वाई कॉपी राइट प्रोटेक्शन कि आप किसी का लें तो आप एक नॉलेज करें आप उनको रेस्पेक्ट दें एट द सेम टाइम यू मस्ट है राइट प्रोटेक्शन तो जरूरी है अदरवाइज लोग काम नहीं करेगा एक समय था कि लोग दूसरों के लिए कुछ लिखते थे एरिस्टोटिल हो या आप देखेंगे तुलसीदास जी ने कहा स्वामता सुख है तुलसी रघुनाथ गा था निबंध मात अपने सुख के लिए उन्होंने रामचरित मानस की रचना की आज के समय में यदि रामचरित मानस और उनके सक्सेसर्स को कितनी रॉयल्टी मिलेगी आज के समय में तो वो एक समय था कि दूसरों के सुख के लिए लोगों ने किया आज लोग ये सोचते हैं कि यदि हम टाइम माइंड एनर्जी इन्वेस्ट करते हैं रिटर्न और इसीलिए कॉपीराइट को दिया लाइफ टाइम प्लस सिक्सटी ईयर्स उसके बाद वो पब्लिक डोमेन में जाएगा पेटेंट्स में दिया ट्वेंटी ईयर्स लेकिन ट्वेंटी ईयर्स ये टू मच लॉन्ग टाइम सो देर फोर्ड एंड दूसरा डिमेरिट क्या है कि पेटी पेटेंट है नहीं तो आपकी इंडस्ट्री कहां से ग्रो करेगी और तीसरा सर सर मित्तल साहब शायद ये एग्री करेंगे कि वर्किंग ऑफ पेटेंट्स 80 परसेंट पेटेंट हमारे यहां शोकेस में रखा हुआ है वो एक्चुअली इंडस्ट्री में यूज नहीं हो रहा है सर यू विल एग्री और नॉट वर्किंग ऑफ द पेटेंट पेटेंट इज नॉट वर्किंग प्रॉपर मुसीबत ये हो गई है तो क्या जरूरत है भाई लो इन्वेस्टमेंट आप ऐसा करो ना उसको फ्री दे दो लोगों को एमएसएमई वाली को ही दे दो नहीं वो ना तो देंगे ना हम यूज कर पाएंगे क्योंकि हैवी इन्वेस्टमेंट इज रिक्वायर्ड थर्ड ट्रेड सीक्रेट व्हाई नॉट देर इज ए लॉ ऑन ट्रेड सीक्रेट कौन सिविल लॉ है कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट में प्रोटेक्शन है उसको वन एप्लीकेशन थ्री पेटेंट आप उसका भी ट्रेड सीक्रेट का भी रजिस्ट्रेशन करा दो यदि इफ अ पर्सन इज नॉट गोइंग टू डिस्कलोज वो ट्रेड सीक्रेट होगा एटलीस्ट ही विल बी रजिस्टर्ड एटलीस्ट यदि पेटेंटेबल नहीं है तो पेटी पेटेंट होगा देर विल बी रिवोल्यूशन इन दिस कंट्री एंड पब्लिकेशन देर शुड बी लार्ज नंबर ऑफ पब्लिकेशन अभी आप देखेंगे ये जो यूजीसी ने केयर निकाला है केयर जर्नल वाला लिस्ट ये ताजुब है यूजीसी एक और कहता है कि प्लेगरिज्म मत करो दूसरी ओर कहता है केयर में यदि आपका आर्टिकल पब्लिश होगा तो आपको पॉइंट मिलेगा प्रमोशन होगा अदरवाइज यू विल नॉट बी प्रोमोटेड और हमारे जो बड़े बड़े बुजुर्ग प्रोफेसर हैं क्षमा कीजिएगा सर गुस्सा मत करिए करेंगे वो लोग कहते हैं तुम्हारा आर्टिकल केयर में पब्लिश नहीं है सो यू विल नॉट गेट पॉइंट यू विल नॉट बिकम प्रोफेसर अभी इस ट्रेनिंग में मैं गया था तो मुझे लड़ाई करनी पड़ी और मुझे मैंने कहा कि केयर तो आज आया है इसका आर्टिकल पांच साल पहले पब्लिश हुआ है साहब आप उसको पॉइंट कैसे नहीं दोगे और दूसरा केयर में कितने जर्नल्स हैं कितने लॉ जर्नल्स हैं जो कि लॉ की आर्टिकल पब्लिश होगी <coughs> कौन कौन जाएगा और एक आदमी आर्टिकल पब्लिश करने के लिए कितने साल वेट करेगा वेर इज इनकरेजमेंट यस यू मस्ट चेक प्लेग यू मस्ट इनकरेज क्वालिटी राइटिंग यू मस्ट इनकरेज क्रिएटिविटी 
but at the same time you must provide the opportunity environment to the people ye zaruri hai tabhi hamare intellectual property has a capability to provide you know maximum number of people knowledge and employment dono baatein isme hai कॉपीराइट के जरिए हम पर्सनालिटी डेवलप करेंगे एज ह्यूमन कैपिटल की बात की गई है सेवेंथ पॉलिसी ऑफ द आईपीआर और पेटेंट्स एंड अदर उसके द्वारा इंप्लॉयमेंट जनरेट करेंगे साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी विल डेवलप एंड इंटायर सोसाइटी विल बी हैप्पी इफ रियली देयर इज अ प्रोपेगेशन टीचिंग ऑफ इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी लॉज एंड राइट सर एनीथिंग आवाज कट के आ रही है हाउ टू आई थिंक हाउ टू जनरेट अवेयरनेस अमाउंटिंग कॉमन मैन अबाउट कहा ना कि ये हम लोग हम लोग प्रोफेसर रॉय रॉय ऑलरेडी in great detail mentioned about awareness i would like to be very brief the seminar that you have organized goes a long way such seminars can go a long way in creating awareness we need more awareness right in practice as well as in theory in intellectual property our commerce our industry our literature our art are dependent on that and um, many times it is mentioned that our arts for example the practices of bollywood are not very much intellectual property friendly so we have to do that on the one hand that uh, we have to strengthen the payment mechanism to authors composers music composers writers of songs yeah, yeah. etc writers of script right and at the same time so, right, our so, right, so, so, etc so that has to be there yeah all right how to create so, awareness as we are doing you know workshop in the urban areas we have to do workshop in the village rural areas then people will learn we have to make a workshop or uh, organize workshop in schools where yeah. children are learning in a simple language hmm. in a simple language in a common language in a day to day language we have to make them understand unless this type of campaign is there there can be no awareness because we know very well that we are attending these seminars or organizing these seminars what are the purposes very few people are taking benefit very few people sir thank you sir thank you absolutely uh dr suresh chandra pandey i request uh, dr pandey to please propose a uh, vote of thanks on behalf of dr rajendra prasad law okay. institute kumon university nainital okay. okay thank you so much ma'am for giving me an opportunity to propose vote of thanks it is my great privilege to propose a vote of thanks at this online workshop on dimensional issues and challenges of intellectual property rights organized by dr rajen prasad law institute kumar university nainital on behalf of dr rajen prasad law institute organizing committee and my own behalf i extend a very hearty vote of thanks to all the speakers and participants gracing this online workshop with their presence first of all i would like to thank to our honorable vice chancellor His Excellency Professor N K Joshi Sir, who is presiding this online workshop, without his blessings and inspiration, this online workshop could not be organized. Thank you very much, Sir, for having faith on us and your kind permission to organize this online workshop. Thank you, Sir, for your blessings. Thank you, Sir, for sparing the time despite having only just reservations. Thank you so much. After that, I convey my deep sense of regard, gratitude, and thanks to our guest speaker. Professor Raman Mittal sir professor in charge campus law center delhi university who has graciously accepted our invitation invitation consenting to deliver the lecture we are very fortunate sir to listen the views of uh, professor raman mittal sir uh, he has explored all the aspects of the topic thank you sir for sharing your insightful and comprehensive thoughts thank you sir thank you so much we are deeply indebted to our uh, guest speaker professor s roy the dean research and development director uh, cirf in intellectual property uh, chanakya national law university patna for graciously accepting our invitation and sharing uh, with us his vision on the subject thank you sir for your scholarly 
lucid and informative views on the topic of this online workshop thank you sir thank you so much i also like to extend my sincere thanks to professor ak pan sir dean and head faculty of law kumar university for blessing this program with his gracious presence and sharing his views on the subject thank you sir thank you so much i also extend my special thanks to senior professor dk bhat sir former dean faculty of law kumar university for blessing this program with his gracious presence uh, thank you sir thank you so much i also like to thank professor s d sharma sir who is organizing director of this online workshop and also the director of dr rajan prasad law institute to my university nanital for organizing this online workshop on such an important topic thank you sir for giving the opportunity of being uh, part of this online workshop thank you sir thank you so much i also like to thank to mr ravin singh base sir director chanakya law college rudrapur who is head of the technical support team to this online workshop for providing necessary technological support to conduct this workshop thank you sir thank you so much i also thank my senior and dr rajin prasad law institute kumar university nanital dr deepak sri joshi ma'am who is also a member of the organizing committee of this online workshop thank you so much ma'am <coughs> i also like to thank pratibha singh a student of dr rajin prasad law institute kumar university nanital for assisting by selecting questions of participants for question answer session i thank the organizing team to make this program a success on behalf of organizing committee i commend parties and to all participants from across india for that you are the foundation bands this online thank you thank you so much and lastly i would like to thank everyone once again thank you thank you so much.